Welcome to K-Drama School. I'm your host, Grace Jung, and class is now in session. talking about the show Unfamiliar Family, which came to me as a request a few months ago, but I am only now able to discuss it because it took me a long time to finish the show. It's not because the show is a bad show or anything like that. It's just because the show is very slow moving. Slow moving doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad or boring. It just means that it's slow. And if it's slow, then it requires my undivided attention. And I really wanted to give this show my undivided attention. This show is something I would categorize as a chamber piece. So it's got a very minimal cast of characters and it's got a very quiet tone that lasts all throughout the show. There aren't really that many huge ruptures that like shake and shatter everything. Although it's not to say that the show doesn't have drama. This show is absolutely in the category of a melodrama, meaning that the camera certainly fetishizes tears. The storytelling, I would say, is in the shape of an onion. So what we have at the start are just the characters' assumptions, presumptions, their limited ideas, their limited beliefs, and then slowly as the onion layers peel back, we see that there are other facets to these perspectives that the characters had that they didn't have before. And as these perspectives come in, the story changes, their whole story about their past and all these assumptions and choices that they made around these fears or insecurities or sadnesses, all of these things change and shift. I appreciate the show for its steady use of the theme, Unfamiliar Family, to reflect back on the title, but also to center us throughout with this theme, this thesis of what is an unfamiliar family? The grown children learn about their parents' separation. And they were like, well, we had no idea that our parents were unhappy. We just thought that they were just going to live this way and that this was the norm. But no, parents have feelings. And if they're trapped in their feelings of unhappiness, they're going to go and make a choice. They're going to leave. The father loses his memory. And this makes him unfamiliar right to the family members but also the the father's like i don't know who these people are who are these people so his whole family is unfamiliar to him during this brief amnesiac phase in his life and then when unhi reunites with her old friend chanyuk who she cut ties with four years ago that's another type of unfamiliarity right the friendship is considered like a family because of the closeness that they share. They both realize that there were things about each other and their stories that they just didn't know. They didn't know. They made certain assumptions. They felt hurt. They felt pain based on those assumptions. But they eventually start a romantic relationship. And that's entering an unfamiliar phase in that layer of the relationship. There's also a kind of defamiliarization in that relationship shifting process as they enter the romantic relationship while leaving the friendship element behind. So this crossing of boundaries creates a sense of defamiliarization. It's like getting to know this person in a new way. How do I get to know this person as a man and a woman versus before it was just a platonic friendship? The mother character has an unfamiliar family. First, the father of her first child. He's an unfamiliar family member in that he is estranged. Unju, her first daughter, she did not know that she was conceived out of wedlock uh, with a man other than her, her father. And later she meets that birth father in person, an unfamiliar family member, who says to her that he has no interest in having a relationship with her that it doesn't matter that she is his biological child that he has a family of his own and then unju's husband being an unfamiliar family member given his closeted gay status and this lifestyle that he kept from his wife who is his 
family, but kept it hidden for years. Unju's mother-in-law, who was aware of her son's queerness, but did not reveal this to the daughter-in-law because she was in part in denial of it. The mother did not want to acknowledge that her son is gay. She did not want to accept this fact. And in that regard, the mother and son are unfamiliar to each other. They remain strangers when it comes to this particular aspect of the husband's life. Eunhee, not knowing how vulnerable her older sister can get, is another aspect of unfamiliarity as a family member. Eunhee did not know that her older sister was having panic attacks because of her miscarriage. So there were all these secrets about her older sister who she looked up to and thought was this stone-cold kind of person, but turns out, no, she has these pains, these wounds that were just never uh, revealed to her younger sibling. The youngest son, Chiu, is trying to unfamiliarize himself with the family. That's his journey. He wants to stay out of the family drama or he ignores it, pretends like it's not happening, or he runs away from it, like he goes to Canada to be with this online girlfriend of his, an unfamiliar person who he hopes to become families with, but turns out that girlfriend catfished him and then scammed him out of his money. His chosen family, turns out, was not the right choice. The father regains his memory and realizes that he has another son in another city. And for decades, his wife, who knew about this other child, assumed that this was a son born out of his affair. But turns out this was never the case. For decades and decades, she has been quietly suffering and heartache and heartbreak when, in fact, it had nothing to do with that. The father was just hiding the fact that he had accidentally hit this young boy, disabled him physically, and just could not deal with the guilt, and so became a surrogate father to this young boy to make up for this accident that he caused. And then Chiu later learns that his father had this soft and playful side to him, but it was spent on a, another boy and not him, his own son. The part that struck me the most on this show is when the father's Hangshik starts to regain his memory and he has to come to terms with his cruel words and actions that he unleashed on his wife. And this return to his youthful, optimistic, loving self at an old age. And when he's realizing these cruel actions, it's like they were really stemming out of his own fear, his own paranoia, and his own insecurity. They were not based in any grounded reality. And so these projections that he had when he was lashing out on his wife and while his wife was reacting in the same way, they sort of have this moment of lamentation where they're lamenting the wasted years of having these misconceptions, mis like miscommunications, misunderstandings, and they're just overwhelmed with the sadness and they sort of grieve the loss of the years where they could have been more loving and more understanding and more connected rather than be resentful of each other over nothing. This show inserts a very important piece of mental health awareness and that is through the father's hangshik. He's an uneducated man. He is a working class man, a truck driver supporting his family and he doesn't have the tools to cope with his pain. So it just becomes anger. So he finds help through a mental health professional and begins to journal his feelings, which later his wife finds and she reads and she becomes very moved by. And watching this character, this man in his 60s, behaving like this naive, smitten young man in love with his wife is comical, not just for the viewer, but for the family members, the characters, because they're just like, we've never seen our father be this way. And it's very awkward for them to encounter this soft, tender-hearted, vulnerable man in this father who they always knew to be stoic and cold and a bit distant. It's a rather major adjustment that everybody needs to make. 
What this means is that the anger and the silence and the stoic rage are learned behaviors for Sangshik, and they do not reflect his actual character. The real Sangshik is the one who adores his wife and would do anything for her and for his family. In a way, this show is about Sangshik's return to his original self and the healing that brings all of his family members through this journey. And everybody's making an effort to relearn who they are when they're at their best, rather than trying to remember who one another were when they were at their absolute worst. I appreciated Hanyeri's centrality in this series because Hanyeri very rarely gets a central role, but she's a very interesting actress. Hanyeri's been in the industry for a very long time, and she's worked primarily in independent films in Korea and a little bit of TV shows here and there. But we've of course seen her in Hello My Twenties. We've also seen her as the immigrant mother Monica in the movie Minari, which won Yoon Yeo-jung a Oscar last year. Han Yeri's look reminds me a lot of Carrie Mulligan's face. Yeah, They both have a very vulnerable look and that comes of course with a lot of strength as well. Watching Hanyeri play the middle child was also very interesting because she gets caught in the middle of everything. She feels like she needs to mitigate in between all of her relationships. And I really found it refreshing when her older sister character told her to stop it, to sort of butt out that she doesn't need to make everybody's business her business. And that's definitely the kind of thing that I talk about with my returning guest, Tobias Hauser. And I will have to warn all of you, I get completely cut out of the video at one point because I used Zoom to record this video session. I normally don't use Zoom, I use another platform, but I'm experimenting with different platforms on the market at the moment. And Tobias's face is the dominant face throughout the majority of this video. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you're not really going to see me at all. You're going to see Tobias's face all throughout. So enjoy the rest of this episode. And let's talk to my guest, Tobias Hauser. How are you doing? Uh, I think I had a bad smoothie. Um, like as or in, may, like you're going to barf? Or? Just having a smoothie at all. No, like, uh, yeah, 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 that's what it, yeah, yeah. I feel nauseous. Sorry. How, how are you? Sorry to hear that. I'm good. I'm, you know, I have to hide myself on video. I can't look at myself. Do you have that? I don't know. It's just me. Why? I don't, I, it, I, 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 it feels rude to the other person to, like, stare at myself while I'm in a conversation with the other person. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I wish I was bigger than I am. I wish it's just a small window on top, and I wish I was the main focus for myself. <laughs> you you wish your own screen was bigger. Yes. You know, you could change that. You could change that on the view, and mm. you can. I don't know. I feel like I'm too can, old to learn new tricks. Can... Well, you guys don't do like remote meetings over there. No, we do, but we don't trust Zoom. Are you kidding me? You know, data, data issues. Okay. You don't know what Zoom does with your, they might steal your podcast and market it as, I don't know. I don't as, some, know as some terrorist sexy podcast. Chick talks about movies. A hot, sexy chick talks about movies. I'm okay with that, you know, because that doesn't, okay. you know, first of all, I'm a hot, sexy chick. And uh, true. Yeah. Why would I argue with that? That's great. Thank you for marketing me that way. <laughs> you know, this You're is a welcome. Dream, dream come true. No, no, I, I actually, I'm feeling a little nauseous too. Maybe today's just a nauseous morning. Mm -hmm. Well, evening for you. I didn't have a smoothie. I haven't mm -hmm. eaten anything yet, but I started having a migraine since late last night and I have it this morning and sometimes I get nauseous. Maybe it's the solstice maybe maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. does yeah. things to your body yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely you know i'm also like just coming mm. off my period and that's also you know in line with the moon and shit so yeah you're probably right 
you know, I was, t I was at a birthday party and there were all these, you know, gay men everywhere. And one of them was just like, I, I don't know anything about like zodiacs or astrology. And I was like, how are you a gay man in LA and an actor and you avoided uh, astrology this whole time? And he was just like, yeah, I, all of it sounds like bullshit to me. Like I just completely avoided it. And I was like, oh, this is inter interesting. I don't know. Good for him. Yeah. It's, you know, and that's how I feel too about astrology and um, about everything. Yeah. yeah about, about everything yeah, that yeah. isn't the metaphysical basically yeah. that isn't the metaphysical do you mean i don't know what the metaphysical is <laughs> okay astrology and that shit falls under the realm of metaphysical i think oh. you mean physical physical <laughs> yeah yeah and i can't touch it i don't want it good okay yeah then you mean physical yeah metaphysical mm. is all that can't not be touched uh-huh that makes sense because it's meta exactly Yes. Physical. Yes. Uh huh. It's just another ideation of the physicality, one that we cannot sense with our five senses. Yeah. 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 How is your guitar okay. life going? I remember this time last year, your guitar mm. career was blossoming. Or, I've um. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've I'm learning. I'm still practicing guitar. I'm uh, I've uh, I've stuck with it surprisingly. Yeah. And and you bought yeah, a lot of guitars guitar, like every day. I have bought and sold a lot of guitars, yes. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I've narrowed it down to a sensible 3. Oh great. Which I think is good. It's a wonderful. good number. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you did you keep that pink one? No, the pink one was it was too small for my chubby fingers. Mm. I have I have thicker fingers than the average person. Than the average um, little girl who would so buy just, a pink guitar, yeah. Or or dainty gay man, apparently. <laughs> um yeah. but yeah, I couldn't get in there. Mm. The first time I've said that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so no. I, I had to sell it. I sold it to a lovely lady who lives in a van. Um, oh, great. great. And she came to my place to to try it out. Uh, she looked and smelled exactly like a lady who lives in a van. Uh -huh. um, and and then she she uh, tried the guitar and then she she uh, uh, she she haggled with me. Of course, and, uh, because I'm not I'm not good at that. I was like, OK, yeah. I'll just give me the price you want it and then um she got away with it. Of course she did. Yeah. Yeah, because you're like, I yeah. need you to get the hell out of this place. And the longer she haggles, yes. the longer she'll stay. And you're just like, fuck this. You in fact you yeah. gave her the guitar for free and you gave her a bunch of money to leave, right? That's what happened. Yeah. I gave her gas money for the way. Yeah. I mean to she drive needs away. It. She... Yeah, <laughs> try from away from this yeah. town. Yeah, as far as you can. Um, yeah, no, but that was I've met a lot of interesting people selling guitars and yeah. and selling guitar equipment uh on eBay, just the, the yeah, the most random assortment of people who are into guitars. Mm -hmm. Uh if I'd known that I would have never started playing the guitar. Uh, <laughs> of course not. But now I'm part of the club, I yeah. guess. Yeah, you're one of them. You know, one of these days you will become one of those people who also lives out of your car and uh, believes in the metaphysical and uh, haggles for guitars via, e via eBay. And um, yeah, well, you'll be a whole new person. I already bought the car, so I might. I heard. Yes. I, I don't know if I'm going to sleep in it, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer to becoming that person. <laughs> yeah no you got new frames too these are new glasses they're very cute thank you yeah 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 Topaz uh, is changing yeah, I, I'm just noticing how how uh how oily my forehead is but mm. that's 
you know, it's better it's okay. too oily than too dry, I think. Yes, absolutely. You know, it reduces. Everything's just, everything on my face just sparkles, kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. You reduce friction with oil, whereas if it's dry, there will be friction. Uh -huh. uh, they have a lot of these powders now that um, do away with shine. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Just well, I was I was trying powders. not to throw up, so I had uh, you know I I had other things on my mind than powder. Uh, I was I was because I, I drank my smoothie, and then I was watching the White Lotus. And then I fell asleep during it. And then I woke up feeling like I had a bad smoothie. Ugh. And then uh, for the last half hour, I've just trying, been trying to get rid of that feeling. But now it's talking to you. I feel better. Oh, that's good. Thank you. I'm glad that yeah. that's helping. Yeah. No, it's the worst. Food poisoning is the worst. I I remember the last time I had a terrible food poisoning in LA. And um, I, I had eaten lunch. <laughs> Like I was just really hungry. I came home from the gym. I was starving and I just grabbed whatever was in the fridge and I like stuff it down. And then I'm like, oh, I'm really sleepy. So I pass out and I start having nightmares, just like terrible nightmares. And then I wake up and I'm like horribly sick for the next two, three days. I've never been sick oh, no. like that ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was terrible. Do you know what it was? What, what kind of, what strain, what kind of bacteria? What I have no idea what strain. I don't know if it's even possible to figure that out. I'm just going to say salmonella because that's the only strain I know. Is that even a bacteria? I don't know. Okay. But I'll just say mm. that it's salmonella. It was terrible. I yeah. thought I was yeah. going to die. Yeah. I had, I had a thing called Campylobacter once. And it's a thing normally only, like you only get it if you're a farmer and you get it directly from the animal normally. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know what I ate to get it, but it like knocked me out for a week. That's how long it took. That was that was terrible. Yeah. Oh my so God. don't get that. Don't work how on do a farm. You... I okay. Guess. So you get it, you, it's transmitted if you like rub your face in a sheep's face or something, or or you yeah. eat, or can you get it from eating the animal? Or do you have to fuck the animal? Like that's what I'm curious about. How is this transmitted? No, I think you probably get it from like handling animal feces or something i'm oh, guessing okay. that makes sense um i yeah i don't know how it got into my foods i didn't i didn't touch any animals um somebody's been nasty touching to think about animals somebody who touched my food was touching an animal's... animal butts probably yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry what did you what did you do mm. for christmas um I went to Austria, I took the train to Austria. Uh, then I got the flu the next day and I was in bed for a week. And then I had to take the train back. So that was my Christmas. It was just like, I was just like in bed with the flu. Oh my um, God. Trying not to die. Yeah. Wow. This is a very, um, how do you say, <laughs> uh, in invalid ridden uh, mm. podcast episode. Um, you're not doing so mm. hot physically. Well, neither am I. I'm not feeling well this morning either. You're not feeling well. You were not feeling well up until this whole time, basically, because uh, yeah. you had the flu. Jesus. Yeah. So you had your I, mom take care of you, basically? Yeah. Yeah, I, I sent her to the pharmacy every day with a new, <sighs> to find a new thing for my illness, for one another, another ailment that I was having. Yeah. Wow, she was so sick of me, and she, uh, yeah, at some point she had to change pharmacies because she was so embarrassed <laughs> to go back. <laughs> oh my god, she had to drive to a different village to a different pharmacy. Oh my to get gosh, my stuff. wow, you know, yeah. you, and, you and your mother uh share similarities in that way. I think you uh both embarrass easily, and you will mm. go out of your way to hide your embarrassment. Mm. That's true. When I was a kid, I uh, and my mom sent me to the supermarket or whatever, and she gave me a bag mm -hmm. that wasn't to like to bring back the groceries. And she she gave me a bag that wasn't from that same supermarket. I would uh. refuse to take it because I was so embarrassed about like them them knowing that I I've been to a different supermarket. Yeah, that you're a traitor. I've cheated on them. Yeah. 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 Oh my yeah. gosh, that is that is bonkers. <laughs> That is fucking <laughs> insane. I think you just don't like 
at the core of it, it's fear of inconveniencing somebody. Mm, yeah, I, I I hate that. That is yeah. true. Yeah, I think that's all it yeah. is at the core. And I think my mom does as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, truly, 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 they don't give a shit. <laughs> like, they're just like, yeah. whatever, you know? Just yeah. Do their you job. don't have to it's go just... to a different supermarket. Yeah. It's you fine. can you can wear a Burger King hat and go to McDonald's and nobody will give two shits. They're like, they're a paying customer and they can wear whatever yes. fucking hat they choose to. Yeah. Maybe it was also yeah, you could wear that Burger King crown. Maybe it was also yeah. like um like a matching obsession, like an OCD thing. Like you have to match the institution that you are in with their mm. uh swag. Swag. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Like I don't know. Tote bag, you know? Yeah. Like I it wear It was always a plastic bag too. That also made you feel weird because it was environmentally unsound or something? No, it was the 90s. We, you know, we polluted we didn't in have the 90s. An environment. Yeah. Okay. It's not true. <laughs> Didn't you learn about environmental awareness when you were a child? Um, because they I mean, drilled I was it in. Not to litter. I don't think we were taught that plastic was bad. Hmm. I don't know if they knew did, did they know that plastic was bad in the 90s. I guess they Probably. did not. They didn't hammer in the plastic guilt in the 90s. Mm. I suppose that's a good point. But they did emphasize recycling and reusing plastic a lot. Yeah. So I, I knew yeah. that like, okay, having too yes. much plastic is like not okay. That was the feeling that they gave me but they didn't terrorize us with like did you know there are 50 trillion plastic bags on this earth right now and they make 50 trillion plastic bags every three seconds like they didn't terrorize us with those kinds of numerical facts just did yet. you just make those up oh or... they're totally made up off the top of my head i, oh, okay. I was i was uh, okay. exaggerating yeah hmm. <laughs> but uh no, the whole environmental awareness thing, it started like with a lot of political intensity since the 60s, I believe. Yeah, probably. When the hippies yeah. were, you know, getting. Joni into Mitchell mm -hmm. paved paradise, put up a parking lot. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah One yeah. of the what? few songs I know how to play on the guitar. Yes. Oh, it's impressive. <laughs> you could play a Joni it's... song. That's really impressive. I can. I think I can only play Joni songs. Oh, okay. Um, That's all you need to know. Yeah. 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 You don't need yeah. any of the other ones. The rest can no. fuck themselves. No. What am I going to do? I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to pick up an electric guitar and be like, jam to Back in Black or whatever it's called. Or the Highway to Hell. <laughs> can you imagine me? <laughs> A little. <clears throat> you know? No, I Maybe. I love Joni Mitchell. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, there's this filmmaker. Oh, I forget his name. He did. He made this movie called Computer Chess. He's like known for mumblecore cinema in the early two thousands. It's like very annoying, but he he made a short film that he wanted to include in a DVD that the company I was working at was making. And there was a Joni Mitchell song. And he was like, is this cleared or can we use this? Like, I remember that was like a question I was floating around and everybody was just like in awe that he chose a Joni Mitchell song. We're like, Oh, we love you for that. He was oh. like our hero for the afternoon. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I love her. I'm very, I'm very bored these days. Tobias Hauser. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm having this migraine. It's because uh, I'm feeling directionless. Well, not directionless. I know what my goals are. I know where I'm headed and all that. I think it's like um, when the day feels long, you know what I mean? Mm. It's, it's just like I somehow get lost in that long day. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I never I never really thought this would be a problem in my life, but it turns out like I've had this has happened to me multiple times over the years throughout. And every time I would think that this is a luxury to have the whole day, 
you know, and to be cool yeah. or whatever. Sometimes it's not. It's really not. It, it can hmm. be boring. It can be stifling. It can be, um, it could get in the way of me trying to get to my goals, in fact. And and I was just talking about this with a friend of mine. It's like being a housewife. And it it's not that fun, you know? Yeah. I always yeah. thought I would enjoy it. I always thought if I got married to a rich man and just had the whole day to lollygag and go shopping and all that I, I thought i would be happy but it's like it gets old it got old real fast is it because there's no structure or just really because there's nothing to do i think the nothing to do has a lot to do with it because mm. sometimes i could just finish whatever i need to do or i just don't do it mm. <laughs> um yeah it's all part of a Anyway, so anyway, this morning, as I was fighting through my nausea and my migraine, I was like, I need to get my shit together, you know, like no more lethargy, you know, I need to build momentum again, ride out the momentum, blah, 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 making these plans, you know, as I'm, yeah. as we're kind of entering the new year, I guess that's where I'm at. Oh, I was was waiting for big epiphany you had or something but no no that's it that's you're, it you're still okay there mm. really there could there can't be a big well the big epiphany is that i thought this is what i wanted to be bored and you know have nothing to do yeah. it turns out boredom is cruel and uh no that is the epiphany it's i like i enjoy a busy life i suppose is what i'm saying now you have me worried because i i uh booked i've booked uh, some Airbnbs for next year. I'm going on a, a trip in the yes. summer, mm -hmm. and uh, I I have booked these very solitary places. Like yeah. one is like a house in a fjord in Norway somewhere oh where God. I'll be for Sounds two weeks. Amazing. Um, and I thought I was gonna have the best time of my life just by myself, but now I'm worried that I'll be too bored. No, but no, I've never you... been too bored so far. Yeah, no, you're gonna be fine. This is just a me mm. problem. It has nothing to do okay. with the two weeks of solitary uh, bliss that you will be enjoying in the summer. Oh, so you're going to go to Norway. You're not going to do the U.S. trip that you had initially talked about. Yeah, no, I'm going to Norway. And then I'm. that's why I bought a car. And then I'm going to, to Italy. And oh, then I don't know so yet. Nice. I'm bringing my guitar. And I'm going to I'm gonna um, write an album. Like like Joni did on with Hijira H H H okay. um, her album that she wrote on a road trip That's what yeah I'm gonna do. you're yeah. gonna write your own you're gonna write your own road trip album. yeah yeah amazing it's gonna be great yeah, yeah I think that sounds awesome mm, we'll see I've been I've been feeling a bit of that wanderlust myself lately because the last trip I made that just were you know like planes and shit it was like i went to new york and then before that i just went to chicago chicago was great but like mm. this past year 2022 was like the least traveled year for me well compared to okay. i guess the pandemic but yeah this coming year i am going to go to alaska so that'll be so Ooh. yeah what are you doing in alaska there's a comedy festival, so I'll be there for oh wow a week doing stand up and probably hiking and probably shopping because Alaska doesn't have taxes on retail. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. Maybe you'll meet Jewel. <laughs> Does she still Another live there? One of my singer songwriter heroes. I don't know. I have no idea. Probably not. She's from Alaska. <laughs> She was uh, born in Alaska, uh, Alaska, in Alaska. Alaska. Okay, and she uh, represented Alaska in the, uh, I think, sh very short-lived NBC experiment TV show known as the American Song Contest. Oh my um, gosh! I think it came out this year, I believe. Yeah, and they picked they picked a a person for each state. And I, I believe she was eliminated in the first round, unfortunately. Yeah. It's 
all of this is like such shocking information. First of all, I did not know that Jewel is from Alaska. Second, yeah. I did not know that there is a show, a TV show right now with her yeah. on it or she was it, it on was in it. the summer or in spring. Oh, yeah. my God. I was like this whole time. I was oh. just like, where the hell is she? Like, what is she doing? And oh, this explains she was it. also in The Masked Singer. The Masked Singer this okay, year. Well, they I have believe. everybody on that. Maybe Jewel's making yeah. a comeback. It sounds like she's making a comeback because she's on TV a lot. It sounds like her publicist is busy. But yeah, it's also shocking to me that she was eliminated in the first round when it's Jewel. Yeah. Like she's a very talented yeah. artist. Yeah, yeah, she's um, she's Jewel. Yeah, she's a. <laughs> Have you ever seen that video of her and Jessica Simpson? And Jessica Simpson's. They're singing together, and Jessica Simpson is basically doing a dual parody, just right next to <laughs> Jessica Simpson. It's See it's it. my favorite video of all time. Okay, I'm gonna She's look it like, up later. Uh, uh, uh. It's it's very funny, and Jewel is looking at her like she doesn't she has she doesn't know if this if this bitch is being serious. <laughs> that is- <laughs> Fucked up. Jessica Simpson cracks me up. She is like a fucking space alien. Uh, <laughs> I I was feeling like nostalgic recently, so I started rewatching um like her and Nick Lachey, like when when they did the mm-hmm. MTV like you know living together at the wedding thing. Did Did you see that show? It came out uh, like 20, uh, probably at some point. Yeah, like twenty years ago. It was like right after they got yeah. married, and they did a reality show about their life together. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, how how did any of this happen? Like, how were they even how did Nick Lachey put off a whole year not fucking her? And, you know, like, how are they living together now? And oh, my gosh. And then they got divorced at the end of that series. (laughs) It was as if. Hmm. You know what Jessica Simpson said? Vanessa. Yes, he did. What? You know what? You know what Jessica Simpson said after her divorce from Nick Lachey? What she said it was the worst business decision of her life. Oh, I was like, girl, okay. wow, mm. Jesus. Um, and uh, yeah. and Jessica Simpson is now a Republican. <laughs> I, I, okay, I mean, I don't know what else she does. I feel like that's where celebrities go, yeah, if their career dies, if you're like a Dean Kane. Or uh, the guy who played Hercules. Hercules. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And your career is dead. You yeah. just become a Republican and do the so, Republican mm-hmm. speaker circuit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are quite a few Republican celebrities, you know. Um, Tim Allen, big Republican. Yes. Yeah. Who? <laughs> My Tim Allen impression. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Simpson. <laughs> fucking jewel you know who names their child jewel like isn't that a lot yeah that's a lot to live up to yeah especially because i think your last name has a ch- as well it's like jewel culture culture or something you can't have two just j- in, a, in a name <laughs> don't do that yeah i mean like each sound should only be repeated once in your first and last name oh okay ideally hmm. yeah Wow. So many rules with Tobias yeah. Hauser. Yeah. Grace Jung. It's perfect. It is. Grace Jung works. You know, what I what I hope for, and I'm sure it'll happen, but what I hope for is um for you and Huli to come to LA together one of these days. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. If you guys I can. would like that. I was looking at I was looking at flights actually again, once again. Uh but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this summer is going to be an option. Yeah. Flights are expensive. Yeah. And uh, I hear Europe is not doing so well with the inflation. It's, uh, you know, better than um, 100 years ago. But... Um... <laughs> Indeed, that's that was the last time there was a big inflation in Germany. Um, but yeah, also better than Argentina. So, yay! Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Yeah. uh, 
Asia is not doing so well. My friend went to Japan recently, and she was like, everything was so cheap. I was like, in Japan? And she's like, yeah. Really? Yeah. I actually, I plan Okay. to go to Asia this year because I've never been to Vietnam. And Mm-hmm. um, I wrote a new book this past November, and there's a Vietnamese character in there. And I was just like, I don't know anything about Vietnamese people or their culture or what they're about I don't know their history and like I'm doing research I'm reading books and stuff but like I feel like I need to go and experience that country a little Yeah. bit to know for sure Yeah. so I want to go to Vietnam and I think I also want to go to Thailand because it's like Yeah. paradise on earth and I've just never been like every time I go to Asia Yeah. I stay in Korea and I don't really go to the other Asian countries and I'm like why why the fuck not I should Yeah. go I've never been to Asia. Period. oh my gosh Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. you should Um go sorry. yeah I no yeah, I should. I should. Um I know. I I travel alone a lot and I'm I'm very anxious traveling places where I don't speak the language or know the culture when I'm by myself. I get that. Cuz yeah. I think Yeah. that's the biggest anxiety for everybody who travels. But, you know, like Yeah. I travel, I travel through Germany. I didn't speak German. Travel Yeah. through most of Europe and didn't speak their language at all. And Yeah. um you know, the thing is like English really is the world language and Hmm. Asian countries have English speaking hotel concierge people and tourists. Yeah. I mean, you know, tour guides and restaurant workers so you should be fine i don't know i assume Yeah. Yeah. I've only been to korea <laughs> um <clears throat> that's not true i've been to malaysia and i've been to indonesia i've been to hong kong i've been to japan i have never been to china it's weird Hmm. i've never been to china i'd like to go but china intimidates Yeah. me something about china is like very intimidating Like politically or geographically geographically or culturally. it's Yeah. i think i well maybe all of it because for americans to go to china we do need to get a special visa which takes time uh Mm. Yeah. and also yeah like culturally it's very different and also geographically it's massive it's like a huge That's country vast. yeah 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 Yeah. so Yeah. i don't know I might have to go with friends. Um cuz yeah, there are certain trips that I'm just like I'm not I'm not sure if I can stomach it alone. I need I need Yeah. some support, emotional support. But no, I think that's like Yeah. cool of you to, you know, cuz I know you you've done like many you've done a lot of your trips like alone. I actually I've done quite a few trips alone too and I think it takes a certain amount of courage to do that. I don't know. I think it also just it takes a um an inability to um compromise and just get sick of people's shit really easily. Um that's that's probably the main reason I travel alone. I went to London this October uh with three of my friends and I think I just I ended up doing nothing uh for the entire trip just because because everything sort of was so tiring and ne negotiating with people what to do and where to go. Right. And then also just when you're four people in the same apartment, Yeah. um, it's very hard to get a full night's sleep. Yeah. So during the day, I was just tired all day. And then, yeah, just Okay. So you were stayed just... in and slept. Oh, you didn't even like grumpily like follow them out. You were just kind of... I did once and then uh, that was the first day and the next day I think I was I was really hungover because um, I broke my I fell off the sobriety wagon and then the third day we left I believe so yeah that's why I ended up <laughs> not doing much. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, there isn't a whole lot to do in London anyway. It's a city. I mean, Yeah. what the And fuck? I mean, you know, most Europeans have been there several times. Exactly. At some point, you've run out of things Exactly. to do. Exactly. In London, that's the one 
place you go and get shit faced. Like that's all you know. London people do is they just get roaringly drunk all the time, <laughs> right? Like that's all I hear about. It's like people who used to live in that's, London. Yeah, they're just like, Fair yeah, enough. we would get off work and all of our all of us together, all of our coworkers would go to the pub and we would just drink until midnight. And I'm like, yeah, but when do you have dinner? They're and like, then, we don't we don't yeah. have dinner. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Eat some chips at the at the bar. Yeah, they'd be like, we have or, some chips at the bar, and then we yeah. would get a Kit Kat bar, and then we would go to sleep. And I'm like, oh my god, yeah. how are you alive? And then like, well, that's why I had to wake leave. up at six the next morning because the commute is three hours to it the city. Doesn't sound like any way to live. I would not be able to mm. tolerate that. Yeah, yeah, and you know, Plus like English people. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're really. You know, I, I, like in France, like I was fine. Like in Paris, I was fine. I, you know, they all seemed fine to me. But when a Parisian leaves Paris and is out of their element and somewhere else, like I met, I met a this Parisian dude in New York. It was like a friend of a friend of a friend, mm -hmm. and he was like at the table. He was such a dick. I was like, you're the okay. worst. You're you're just the worst European ever. Like. Any question I ask him, he would have a sarcastic question back, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. as if I asked him the stupidest shit ever. And I would just be like, yeah. what is your deal? Like, what's your fucking problem? And I was like, you know what? We need to teach you a lesson. So uh, I took him to a Korean karaoke place. There was like a bunch of us and we just like made him sing songs <laughs> to embarrass him. Okay. And um, yeah. Yeah. And that brought him down a few notches, you know. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Gotta show those French. Yeah, Londoners do kind of suck. There's an American dude that I met. He had moved to London. Oh, my God. He was such a nightmare. You know what, though? I'm not going to talk shit. Like, that's one of my New Year's resolutions is, like, <laughs> I want to not complain and talk shit. And I also don't want to listen to complaining and talking shit, like, mm. when I'm out you know hmm. having a social thing like if people are talking okay. shit or they want to like gossip and grill somebody together i'm just like uh, yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna go outside and get some air or something that's what i'm gonna try and do okay yeah what about you do you have anything like that uh no i i i'm i know i am going to complain a lot i'm gonna keep complaining it's what i do yeah no, that's, that's fine main... No, no, I mean, traits. I mean, for your own own uh, like resolution, because I remember last year you said you had just gotten promoted and that you have a lot of these like underlings and that they sort of bitch and whine a lot and that you will care less what people think. Mm. I think that's what you said. Okay. I don't remember that, but I hope I do care less what people think. Yeah, no, I have, but I, um, uh, no, I think my, my, my goal is, and what I've been doing, what I've been trying to do is walk out of a situation if I don't feel like being there instead of trying to make the situation better, I'm just going to leave. Yeah. Um, yeah, because what's the point? If you're not enjoying yourself, I'm not going to force myself to be around and hope that it gets better because it never yeah. does. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That's like enormous, not engaging in other people's problems. Mm. Dude, that's like... Yeah. And then you're also huge. taking yourself away from... You're just eliminating that need to... Because that's one of the main reasons that I was that I that I was drinking alcohol is just like to in order to enjoy being in a situation that I don't want to be in mm -hmm. um so yeah if you just leave you're automatically gonna drink less yes yeah 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 that's also huge like we tolerate so much more bullshit when we are inebriated and immobilized and our judgment is impaired <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, that's absolutely true. Like, um, I don't know. Did you watch like Jackass? Like when you were a teenager, like on MTV? It's like, yeah, 
Yeah. Okay, so there was this guy named Bam on Jackass. He was like mm-hmm. one of the one of the three. Yeah. So Bam became sober, like from alcohol. Mm-hmm. He was like getting off alcohol and he was just like, When I quit drinking, I realized I had nothing in common with the people I hung out with because we were always yeah. dr- drunk. And yeah. That's absolutely, absolutely true. There are like people yeah. that I am not friends with anymore because I'm not drunk. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just hap- it just happens. Because it's not the real us when we are shit face drunk. People like to say yeah. that, though. They're like, oh, the real you's coming out because they're like throwing punches and kicking and screaming. And I'm like, maybe in a way, like that real you is saying, I don't want to be here with these people mm-hmm. dealing with these kinds of issues. That's in that sense, it is the real you. It's like, please get me the hell out of here. And, yeah. uh, yeah, alcohol's really it, it's not a good drug, I don't think. Yeah. No, it's not. But, but why do you want to quit drinking? Is that like another reason other than I mean, those are really good reasons, H- huge reasons. Yeah. But I just also don't want to be hungover ever again. Um I've missed so many days of my life and so many just like you know, also like meetings with people and appointments. Right. And like plans that I've made that I've had to cancel but because I was too hungover. Right. Um yeah. yeah, I just don't want to do that. I totally get mm. it. Yeah, it yeah. it does feel stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're coming into clarity. Um, That's great. Yeah. And I've I've stuck with it mostly over the last since like july Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's great yeah yeah i'm happy yeah it's not easy to do so that's awesome good for you um i had uh i had quit smoking pot last year in december and then this this month as soon as it turned december i started smoking pot again and that's actually okay. contributing to things like my lethargy and hmm. you know, things like that. And that was one of the things I had to write down this morning. It's like, well, this is getting in the way of my goals. If it's getting in the way of my goals, then is it serving me? No. So hmm. I should stop, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because last year I had stopped smoking pot because I couldn't control my eating once I get high. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not happy with it. But now it's more yeah. than that. It's more than just eating. It's like everything else. Okay. Um, okay. You know what? Let's um, let's dive into some uh, flashcard questions because you know okay. these, these are always fun, and you're always great with it. So oh. let's do that. You know, I mean, okay. So the the show I'm going to talk about today is called the Unfamiliar Family. And uh, mm-hmm. I love this show because it uses this term unfamiliar family in so many different ways. I was like, oh, they're an unfamiliar family, like they're married, but they don't know each other as an unfamiliar family. Or your parents have a past that you don't know about, even though you've lived with them for 30 years. That's an unfamiliar family. So I was just like, I'm I'm appreciating how they're using this phrase unfamiliar family in such a diversity and versatile sort of way okay so yeah so let's say you're a woman in her 30s your name is Mm -hmm. Unhee and your elderly mother says to you and your two siblings that she and her husband your father she's like we're gonna separate they've been Mm -hmm. together for 30 something years and now they are older and they are going to separate and they make this announcement what do you do? Um, how old are they? Like old. Let's say old. Old. You know what? Elderly is probably not that accurate. Let's say they're like in their late sixties, seventies. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would. Uh, I don't know. Start out giving by giving her a makeover. Maybe she. <laughs> That's not a good age to find a new partner. Uh, you know, 
you're not at your best physically speaking probably um but yeah um i don't know i mean good for them is it is it i would uh i would i would listen to her i would hear her out and then uh probably not try to find out why because i would be very worried that she would start talking about their sex life and then that's the reason why they broke up and i don't want to see i don't want to hear any of that uh right. i yeah um my family my family doesn't have sex in general uh no we don't doesn't no, we don't do that nobody uh, does we don't yeah. feel emotions either we don't no. we, we, we don't talk about that mm -hmm. um so yeah um no but good for them yeah i love how your answer was immediately like another heteronormative you know conclusion for your mother it's like okay you and your husband are separating we need to get you back out on yeah. the market and get you back out on that high horse but at the same time you're like but i don't want to hear about your sex life but we yeah, have to no, make you it's... sexually uh you know attractive yeah. but yeah. it's not for sex it's just for looking but like in a yeah like in a drag queen way like drag queens you know don't generally don't have sex in their makeup so i would just make my mom I would just transform her into a drag queen, maybe. Fascinating. <laughs> she could find a nice, a nice little uh, drag chaser, Fascinating. and then <laughs> they'll never have sex. Fascinating. Yeah. You, you know that's what Nikki Glaser said. She was like, "The number one rule in getting a man is to look fuckable, but to not fuck, mm -hmm. them. but to not fuck mm -hmm. them." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh." This yeah like in, exactly in line with what you're saying okay beautiful it's, uh, yeah Ideal. wonderful okay let's say you're the same woman you're you're the same chick and he and there's a new supervisor at your job okay he's newly hired he's your new boss it's his first day he's a pretty hot guy all right mm -hmm. the, the two of you and your coworkers, I mean, you all went out and got drunk, right? And people were moving from bar to bar to bar. But it's like down to just the two of you. And the two of you have sex that night. And the, mm -hmm. next, the next day, your coworker tells you that when he was calling her a cab, that he was like being very handsy with her. And what do you do? Uh, my coworker was handsy with no he she's saying she's saying to you that the boss that you just slept with oh when yeah. he was calling her a cab the night before oh, and like getting yeah. her in the cab because she was too drunk she said like he yeah. was being very handsy okay um that's fine i don't mind being sloppy seconds because she if she didn't want him but he's hot i'll take him i'll do it <laughs> um okay not great on his part like don't yeah. you know sexually harass your uh the people who work for you obviously right. yeah uh but if you must do it with me <laughs> yeah if she's uh dumb enough to reject your advances i've just taken the women's liberation movement back about 100 years um <laughs> it's okay but hey i don't I've never benefited from women's liberation, so why should I, you know, why should I care? Um, no, the thing is, it's like, you know, some some of us do like it a little rough, you know? What do you, I mean, mm. what are you going to do? You know, it's just how mm. we're wired sometimes, you know? Like, we yeah. were talking about, uh, so, you know, um, fuck, what's his name? He's on Barry. Bill Hader. So, you know Bill Hader, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so Bill Hader, when he was on SNL, very funny guy. I never, ever thought of him as an attractive person. I never thought of him as yeah. an ugly person. I just never thought of him in that yeah. way at all. Okay? Yeah. And then Barry comes on, and mm -hmm. I am suddenly so attracted to him. I'm like, oh, really? my gosh. I am so turned on. Okay. Like, what is it? Why am I into it? It's because Barry's toxic. He's, like, really toxic oh. on that show. Yeah, yeah. That's mm. what I realized. I was like, that's what it was. Mm. Yeah. Okay. He's not like some goofy clown on SNL, you know, all yeah. cast all castrated yeah. and all safe. No. In yeah. Barry, he has edge. He's a murderer. <laughs> oh, is he? Oh. Yeah, you, you haven't seen the show? 
I no, I've not. That's no. why you have no you have no context. Well, I mean, he's also buffer, you know, because he's like a former mm. marine, so he's like more buff. But yeah, holy shit, okay. is he toxic and sexy on that show? So yeah, Jesus. okay. <laughs> okay, let's say, let's say that you're the same chick. You're in he. Okay, mm-hmm. your your father who is being separated from his wife, mm-hmm. your mother. He went hiking one day and disappeared. <clears throat> Two whole days, just mm-hmm. gone. Nobody could find him. They're like, what the fuck? He's he's missing. And then they find him. He's at the hospital. Yeah. He has like some minor injuries because he rolled down a, a mountain. And they say he has uh, temporary amnesia. Like he can't remember oh. any anything that happened to him after he was yes. age 22. So he thinks he's 22 years old. And that he has yeah. a wife who was pregnant and they're like, you know, yeah, doesn't know whose children are anyway. Yeah. What do you, what do you do? Well, first of all, that plot line was stolen from Twin Peaks, but that's besides the point. I, what I do is, uh, this is perfect. Like this is like a perfect podcast material. Mm. You can do like a true crime podcast about like who kick my father off a mountain with like the father who's who thinks he's in his 20s like he's the perfect interview guest as well like that's perfect marketing material Uh uh-huh just do that like make a podcast about it and he's you know nobody like probably nobody pushed him off the mountains like just make shit up just like pretend it was i don't know pretend it was the former prime minister of South Korea. You don't know. Uh-huh. It's gonna, it's gonna prove you wrong or right. Just make yeah. some shit up. Um. Yeah, that's fun. Okay. That's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, South Korea doesn't have prime ministers; yeah. they have presidents. But <laughs> okay, no, that's oh. fine. Uh. Okay. Oh. No, that's oh. I. I would have never guessed that kind of answer. All right. Let's say though. Okay. There's a twist here. Um. They found a a bottle of sleeping pills that he had been collecting this whole time in his mountain gear backpack. They also found his truck that he was driving around for work, like just parked in the parking Mm. lot with the keys inside. All of his wallet, his phone, everything was left behind. And they found a bottle of sleeping pills that he had with him when he lost consciousness up in the mountains and the speculation is of course that he went up there to kill himself what do you do yeah well uh grace this my own father committed suicide when i was younger how dare you trigger me like that oh shit i'm Um, so sorry (laughs) i'm just kidding um um what do i do i mean so he took the sleeping pills and (laughs) he took the sleeping pills or are they still in there no, they were still intact. He he oh. did not have a chance to take them. He had just oh, okay. fallen down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I take the sleeping poles away from him uh, so he can use them. Um, get him therapy. Is that too sensitive? Too sensible? Too sensible an answer? No, it's um, fine. Yeah. Um, After what you know. had said, I think it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. You know, we have enough drama I'm, for I'm, the rest of the I, episode. I do enjoy confronting people with that when they don't expect it. It's a oh yeah, I, f- fun woo, little mood like killer. No plow, just you know, came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I actually don't think I knew that. I yeah, mm. I didn't know that it was a suicide yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a mood killer for people. That's why I usually don't yeah. bring it up unless I get to make a joke about it. And then I do. Okay, good. At least you have an, yeah. an outlet. You have a way of channeling it. That's good. It's yeah. healthy. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right, let's say you're you're the same girl. You're, you're Unhi again. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. and your older sister, Unju, you guys were estranged for like four years. Didn't talk to each other mm-hmm. for four years because... At the time, you and your boyfriend of nine years were breaking up because turns out your boyfriend was cheating on you. 
And so you went to your mm -hmm. sister to tell her like how this is difficult and you can't believe it and blah, blah. And your sister was just like a really cold bitch to you that day. She just wasn't empathetic, wasn't sympathetic. And so you felt betrayed. So you guys stopped talking for four years. Okay. But after your mom said she's separating from her husband, you guys sort of like came back together, rekindled things. All right. Now you find out that your older sister's marriage is in trouble because turns out her husband is a closet gay man and he's been chatting mm. with other gays on this gay site. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Chatting with other gays on the gay site. Okay. On the gay site. Um, yeah, but he did not... He, that's not why my boyfriend left. No. What if they... What if oh they end up gosh. together? Oh my gosh. I wonder if that's ever I wonder if that's ever happened. That would be a better to... drama. Wait, that's the plot of Grace and Frankie. I think. Oh, is... <laughs> I th I think so. Uh... Wait, but Grace <laughs> so, and Frankie, yeah. are, they're not sisters, are they? Oh no, they're not. They're friends. That's true. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're friends. And they're but their husbands. It would be more left intense them to be with each other if they were sisters, and then their yeah. ex spouses got together and started fucking each other. Yeah, that would be way yeah. more intense. I'm sure yeah. that's happened in history. There's no way that that hasn't happened in history. You know what would be even more intense if they were twins? If the yeah. if the women were twins and the men were twins, wait, then that would be insane. Well, <laughs> also mind. unlikely that they would <laughs> I pushed just, like, in far. their 30s the twins decide to fuck each other they went 30 years without and then they were like now that our bodies are aging and decaying and we're no longer as hot as we used to be now we should fuck each other <laughs> and now that we have wives who also look identical yes oh my god yeah. no i'm sorry i pushed <laughs> i pushed the soap opera envelope too far it went too far <coughs> it fell off the cliff and the car has exploded okay 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 all right all yeah. right Let, all right so um wait what was your answer to it <laughs> if you find out that um, your sister's husband is yeah gay. hook up my ex with her her eggs. Okay, that's so my that's answer. answer. I don't All know. All right. Then, yeah. let's say the same sister, okay? You find out that the mm -hmm. same sister, she's going through this. Like, she just found out that her husband's a gay man, and she's just like, oh my god, what do I do? At the same time, you find out that your older sister, the man that she called dad her whole life, is not mm -hmm. her dad. Okay? So what happened was, your mm -hmm. mother was already pregnant mm -hmm. when she met your father, and yeah. they just had the baby and said, "Let's we'll just raise her as our own. We won't tell her. But now Cat's out of the bag. Your sister doesn't know, but you know. That okay. Her has this other truth. Yeah. What do you do? Um, I'm going to try to hook up mom with her dad. Because <laughs> they just, you know, she's available now. <laughs> you got to get rid of her so we don't have to take care of her. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to see if her dad's available still. Right. And right. then make that happen. Put her in the drag queen outfit. Yeah. Put some makeup on. Make that yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and also and put then... that dad in the drag queen outfit too. Yeah. Yes. That's hot. Yes. They all have to be. And then I can tell my sister that that's her real dad because she'll no longer be sad because her dad is now dating her mom. So it's like, you know, yeah. it's even, as if... an even better deal for her. Yeah. Yeah. It's as if they were never yeah. apart for 30 some odd years. It's like, Hello. Yeah. He, he was around the Hello. Whole time. Yeah. You were just mom's dating dad. Yeah. And she'll be like, Oh, they're back together. And I'm like, no, the uh, you're a real dad. Surprise. Boom. <laughs> and they're in drag queen outfits. It's like getting a present. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. What's there to be sad mm. about? Okay. Good. Okay. Fine. Let's say that you're in he again. You're this, you're that lady. The man, the boss man that you slept with, okay? Mm -hmm. He tells you 
that he is actually in the middle of separating from a, another woman that he's been dating for like nine years, okay? Like he, he told mm-hmm. her that he wants to break up with her. She's having a hard time accepting it. So he's like slowly sort of like easing his way out of her life, okay? Like slowly putting up more and more boundaries, but it's hard because it's been mm-hmm. nine years, right? Okay, so you're like, fine. You, you decide you're going to understand this. And he says to you, I want a future with you. Okay, he's like very clear on that, right? Okay. But this nine-year ex-girlfriend lady calls you on his cell phone and you pick up and then she says to you, like, what, you think you're going to get this man? Like, fucking get a grip. She starts talking shit. What do you do? Well, I didn't want him until she called. Now my competitive side has been awoken and now she she fucked herself up. Because now I'm going to get her man. <laughs> now I'm going to make sure they yeah. separate and they that he gets all the money yeah. in the divorce. I think that's yeah. what happens when straight people, I don't know. And and then, and fuck that shit up. Fuck that bitch up. Make yeah. her, she's going to suffer. She's going to suffer. She's going to be without a house, a husband, and money. Yeah. And I'm going to, and then I'm going to call her and I'm going to be like, Hey, guess what? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> because I will ruin your life. And I just did, lady. Goodbye. And then I hang up. And then, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Enjoy that. I will ruin your life. And I just did. It's the future and the yeah. past. <laughs> yes. Ghost of Christmas, all of them. Yeah, that's me. Okay, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good luck. Okay, great, great. All right, last question. Last question. You're the same chick, Unju, okay? Mm hmm. Oh my gosh. You find out. Okay, your dad, first of all, your dad's memory, it all comes back. All right. Okay. Okay. Turns out, turns out that your father had cheated on your mom years ago. Oh. Mm. and impregnated that mistress had another child and had a whole nother family in a different city and he's Mm -hmm. been bouncing back and forth for Mm. the last like 30 years and your mom knew about it like your mom Mm. knew that there was another woman and that there was another child and she just kept that to herself and quietly suffered all these years Hmm. what do you what do you do it's a very austrian concept except the the other family would live in the basement (laughs) that's the difference so it's very they handle things much better oh my god (laughs) yeah um but yeah i don't know what would i do i would uh I don't know. Would I try to meet my family, my the other family? I don't know. Do they want to meet me? I don't know. I've just ruined a bitch's life. They probably want nothing to do with me. I, <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I've crossed some, born some bridges. Uh, I, I, um, yeah, no. Try to, try to, let my mom know it's okay, and also. She had sex with another man, so that's what she deserves. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tip for tat, mom. Yeah. Remember? Exactly. You were yes. hoeing out and then dad hoed out too. Like you brought a and brought another woman into this family, a child, pretending yeah. it was ours. <laughs> and your it dad's, wasn't my dad's, your husband's, and it wasn't. It wasn't so it was some other dudes. You deserve everything. That's coming to you. Yeah. 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 That's how the boomerang yeah. rolls. That's how it spins. It comes right back. Doesn't roll, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flies right back <laughs> in your face. Good. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Great. Oh, these are great answers. All right. That's Thank it. you. Thank you, Tobias. Okay. Thank you, Grace. <laughs>